Hi, in this video we're going to work through the code to build a data transfer object, otherwise known as a DTO. What you see on the screen here is the result of building the DTO. A DTO is a formatted object that is specifically meant to display the data from a class. And so what we've done in this example is we've taken a product class, which has a price description and a name, and we've added some calculated fields. So let's look at the results. So you can see that the result of my query was to do a search product of the word sand. And then we're going to have some new things. So in addition to sandwich and the price, we have something called a price string, which puts a dollar sign in this. In addition to description, we have something called a short description, which is the first 25 characters of the description field. And then finally, a calculated field called tax. So this here number is a 8% value of 1922. So if you haven't seen the rationale for why we would build a DTO, then pre previously I created this video, and then this is the uh, implementation of it. Also, if you haven't created the uh, REST API that we're seeing here, that is also in a previous uh, video, and you can see how to convert a regular web app into a REST API app. So we're going to pick up from some code that we used in a previous tutorial, and transform it from a REST API into a REST API that uses a DTO, a data transfer object. So let's get started with the code. So now I have just switched the code back to the previous tutorial where we created a REST API. Let's look at the results. So if I were to do a product search here for the word soup, you can see that the only items that are shown are the properties of the product, which are ID, name, price, and description. And so this shows me search results for soup. Also, in showing this in the Postman uh, application, I searched here for sandwich, and you can see again that I have these four properties. So the goal here is to transform this API into one that has the DTO, which we're going to add some custom properties, such as price string, short description, and income tax, or sales tax, I should say. So that's what we're going to code next. So I have in front of us here the code for the product controller, and we're going to modify most of the code that's in this event here. Also, let's go take a look at the objects. So let's go into models, and we have a product model. So this product model includes these four properties, ID, the price, the name, and the description. So now we're going to copy and paste this and turn it into a new object called a product DTO. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply right click on the file for the, the model for the product and paste it. We'll rename it as product uh, DTO and then for the class name in the code we should also put the words or the letters DTO after it. So now we have an exact copy of our first product model. So let's go into the code and change some new properties or add some new properties. So first of all, we're going to add the string property called price string. And his purpose is to simply add a dollar sign and format the dollars uh, string. So you don't have to calculate that in your view. The next item is going to be the short description. So instead of the full description, the short description will be 25 letters. And then the last property that we're going to add is a decimal property to calculate the sales tax on each item. Now, to make this conversion from a regular product to a DTO, I'm going to create a constructor. So CTOR is the shortcut for making a constructor. Then I'm going to accept the basic properties of an object, and then we're going to create the other items with a calculation. So the properties that I'm looking for in the constructor are an integer ID, a string for the name, a decimal for the price, and a string for the description. So you'll notice that ID, name, price, and description are the original properties of this class. The others are going to be computed in the body of this function. Now assigning these first four properties is pretty straightforward. We're going to use the capital ID, which is the property name, and assign it to be the value of the lowercase id, which as you can see is the name of the parameter. And we'll repeat that for the other three. So name equals lowercase name, 
capital price equals lowercase price and description equals description. So these properties are assigned a value based on the parameter that it was passed into them. Now the remainder three properties we're going to calculate using the first four. So for instance, the price string will be a formatted value of price. And so the string.format command with a template tells me that I'm going to use currency. So uh, this comes from looking up the uh, results of how to, how to format a string in currency. So that's what the zero colon C does. So for the short description, we're going to use a ternary operator that will give us the first 25 characters of the description. So we have to set up a condition to say, is the length of the description less than or equal to 25? That's what the question mark is asking. If that is true, then we will take the first case, which is give me the full description string, which is by the results of the, the question, less than 25 characters. In this case, I think every time it'll have to go to the second condition, which is take a substring from zero to 25 and return that. So it will return 25 letters. Then the final character that we're looking for is the tax. And so the tax is take the price times 0 0.08. So we're assuming an 8% sales tax and we have to use the letter M to give this a uh, literal for a decimal number. And so we have all of the properties now of our DTO class calculated in the constructor. And so when we create a new one, we will pass these four values and then we will generate a total of seven properties using the constructor. Now I'm also going to create an alternative constructor that will take a different parameter. Instead of asking for four separate values, we can pass in a single product model. And so this just makes it easier for the user to code. Either one of these constructors will work. So I'm going to substitute all of the values then using this product model parameter p. So p.id instead of the parameter ID. p.name, p.price, p.description, and everywhere you see one of these parameters that was formerly here, we're going to replace it with p. the parameter name. And so when we're done here, we will have a different constructor that can build a DTO using a different input. So it's just cleaner to pass one value in as a parameter, as an object, than to pass four separate ones. And so either one of these is an alternative that would work fine in building a DTO class. So now let's switch into the controller and we're going to modify each of these actions so that they match up with the new DTO model. So let's find the simplest one, which is to return one product. And so the show one product using the ID number as its parameter is where we're going to start. So let's go to the section here that has the return type. So instead of product model as the return type, I'm switching to product model DTO. Then we have to make some changes inside of the body. So first of all, when the, uh, when the return of the repository, the return value from the repository is going to return not a DTO version of our product, but the original, just the product model. And so we'll save that as an item called P. Then we need to create a new item for a return type. So that is the product model DTO, and I'll just name it PDTO. And we need to generate a new instance of this. So we can pass in the product that we got back from our, from our search results, and then we will generate a new product DTO. And this can be returned because it matches the return value that I specified a few lines up. So we've got ourselves a change for the product model by ID number. So let's test this thing out. So I'm gonna run the application. So let's go and search for one of the previous items that I, that I put in earlier. So show one product and it looks like ID number 22 is what I had earlier. And let's see what results come from 22. We should see one product and we should see the DTO version returned. So sure enough, we see cookie dough is the product number 22 and the DTO properties are now visible. So we can see not only the ID, name, price, and the description, but we see the short description, the tax, and the price string. So it looks like this one action is now using the DTO.
So next I'm going to translate the um, actions for the index. So in index, we are going to return a list of product model DTOs. So we'll change the return type to begin with. So the first thing I'm going to do is fetch all of the products from the database. That's what index is supposed to do, is get everything. So we will use this thing called list of product model and we'll name it products. And we'll do the repository get all products method. Then the next goal is to, after we fetch these, is we have to translate them into a new type of list, the DTO type. And so for this, we will have to create a for loop. And so I want to go through each item in the products list. And then for each item, we are going to create a new version of that item. So first of all, we have to add it to the list. We have to have a list to start with. So let's go and create a new list called products DTOs or product DTOs. And we'll make a new empty list. Then inside of that empty list, we're going to do product DTOs dot add. And that will add a new item for each each in the loop. And so we will be able to uh, use the constructor of passing in a single item that's called P. So when we're done here, this should list return a list of product DTOs rather than the simple product model class. So I'm going to test this out again. So let's go to the browser and we can do this uh, quite simply just by using the API extension because the action is index, which is the default. So what do we get when we run API? We get the entire list, and once again, we have a error message on my browser that says I can't see all of this, so I'm going to choose highlight it anyway because it is long. And we do see that ID number two is the first item, and it looks like the DTO object is being returned because we have price string, short description, and tax included in each of these. And so this is one way to do the get all items or the index action. So let's return to the uh, action here, and I'm going to show you an alternative way that uses a way to select each item in the list. Instead of using a for each loop in C Sharp, you can also use the link language. So let's just comment out the original, and I'm going to then set up a new item called product DTOs, and that is going to be returned in this way. So we're going to say from P in products. So that's kind of, it's like a select loop. Make a new or select a new item and it's called product model DTO, the constructor. So the return type of this is not a list, it's an I enumerable. So I have to change the list to I enumerable. But when you're done, you should see the exact same kind of result. We have a return of a list that item for item has been translated into the new data type. So whichever one you prefer, do you like the for each loop or do you like the link syntax and the language of selection that is unique to C Sharp? Now we need to make a few more changes here. So since we are defining this return type as product model DTOs, we do not actually need this item up here on line 28. So we'll get rid of that so their confusion is gone. Now you can see that the return type down here, it says uh, this m variable doesn't exist anymore. So let's see if we can add the product model name in there. So product model DTOs is going to match up here. So, so far so good. No, we have a problem, it says. Now we have a issue that says, since you are getting uh, an I enumerable type here instead of a list, now we have a problem with the return type. So up in the very top for the return type, I'm going to remove the thing called uh, action result and just put in the pure data, which is going to be the I enumerable of product model DTO type. And so now all of the data types match. Also, I'm going to put a notation above the uh, method itself and I'm going to tell the, uh, the action what type of data that this will be. So the key word I'm looking for is response type. And as you can see, response type is not recognized, and so I have to do an installation. So I choose the suggested installation here for a library and uh, let the installation complete. 
then in the inst in the in the parentheses I'm going to put in here what type of data that should be displayed here so it helps the uh, helps this controller you know display the data in the proper format so type of and then say this is going to be a list of the product model DTO so when you get done here the results um, should be the same the code obviously was supposedly going to be better if we use the link uh, syntax the link language however it turns out that when you don't have an explicit data type of the list instead of using I enumerable there's a few other things that have to be done but either version of this action should give you the same results let's run it and find out if it works all right so we got the application up and running let's go ahead and put in the uh, slash API as our request and see what we get for results and it looks to me like we got the entire list of database work again and so the search results can be done in either format and let's go ahead and choose highlight the uh, syntax for JSON and there we have the entire list of DTO objects so this here is the index which shows everybody so this gives you a pretty good start now I'm going to let you do some of the challenges here so let's look at some of the other actions that are not done in our controller so I'm looking down at this section called search term so we are supposed to do a search products action so search products gives me a search term then it goes and gets the term in filters the results from the database and instead of showing the entire list of products we are getting a partial list that matches the string so since this here is very similar to getting all results I'm going to let you use either one of the two methods that were programmed to create a list of DTO objects so adopt this as your model and adapt it to use the search term so that's your first challenge we've got some other ones down here so we've got things like uh, show one product this one here showed how to do the conversion from one type of data to the other we've got a few others that allows us to do enter in entering uh, either one item or to create uh, an edit or a delete so these here are going to be your challenge make sure that you can get them all to work with the DTO as your model instead of the standard product model and good luck with that so we've got ourselves a DTO instead of the traditional and if you want to remember why we're doing this process what's the point of all this code uh, go back and watch the previous video on some of the advantages such as security flexibility and the permanency of your API so that way you have a uh, happier users in the long term so good luck with the challenges